I have devoted all my time as an artist my whole life to doing representational work, what everybody calls realism. The three-dimensional world, but it's on a, a two-dimensional plane. And that's what being a realist artist does. I started when I was about 14, and just drew realistically from the beginning. So that's why working with Monticello was kind of a natural step for me because it worked perfectly with what I had been practicing my whole life. Since the inception of the seed program at Monticello, we have had one beautiful botanical line drawing that was the packet cover of every single seed packet. And while it was beautiful, it did not show what the plant or the flower or the vegetable look like. So we decided to change the packets for the Center for Historic Plants line. And we started working with local artist Tim O'Kane. To do this series for Monticello, I knew I had to create something totally unique. Each piece that we take on, each subject we take on, is distinctively different from the others. And I love the challenge, you know. You want me to paint that? We wanted to make sure that the paintings themselves depicted the plant as accurately as possible, but also kind of fun and, and beautiful at the same time. I mean, you have a very small space you got to work with. So you got to pack a lot into this little thing. And we go through a long process of deciding what we want to include. This whole thing has been just like taking a a serious course in horticulture, botany, you know, because the people that I work with are so knowledgeable. Each silk is, is a kernel, makes a kernel. Is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that. You know, it's really a project that all of us work together on. From the beginning, when we're planning out the paintings, we want to make sure that we're highlighting the things about that plant that is especially intriguing. Sometimes we take some artistic license and show two or three stages of the plant, which would never show up at the same time, but it's important to have it in there. One of the plants that we looked at most closely was the Florence fennel. The fennel happened to be growing up at Monticello Gardens, so I went up to take pictures of it there, and I'd look through them and begin to sketch, draw it out. I'd put as much detail as I felt was important, and then I'd show it to everybody. So when Tim was doing the initial sketches, he included a fennel bulb, and then fennel also has beautiful fringy foliage to show. However, fennel, when it's in flower, gets to be about five feet tall. So when you have a seed packet that's gotta be this big, in the end, we took out the flower in the painting. This is one of the artistic licenses that we had to take. This entire project is made possible by the generous support of our donors, Ken and Teresa Wood. Thanks to the support of the Woods, we've been able to complete 90 paintings so far. And we have had really great comments from the visitors and the customers that we've had in the shop and online. For example, we found out through our Farm and Garden Facebook page that a visitor had loved the seed packet so much that she had made her own shadow box to display the packets. So she's created shadow boxes of your seed packet art and framed them and hung them around her house. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. The thing is that they're not just seed packets. And I didn't want them to just be mundane seed packets, you know, or just direct illustration. I wanted them to be lively, and I wanted them to work as paintings.